Oh, guys, in Chicago last week, Cat put a hundred M's in the school. You what? Cat put a hundred M's in the school. A hundred M? Hundred M's, hundred million, yeah. Oh, he put a hundred mil on, in the school. Yeah, you know, with the, with the system and all that. One school or a school system? A school and uh, two locations for the school. It's inspiring, man. He said he'd be coming down here quite often because his buddy is down here. I told him I want to hook him up with you next mm -hmm. time he come down. I said, man, I got a partner, man. Y'all y'all are the same cloth, man, because, you know, he up there in Cook County in Chicago and passionate about the young folks, man, and doing his best to make change. And it's a beautiful thing, man. He inspired superintendent up there. I was just talking to the baseball coach at the school. Mm -hmm. Just about the state of athletics in the city. And there's just a, a greater and greater divide between inside 285 and outside 285 to where it's almost leaving. These young cats lost, mm -hmm. left back. Um, and and the catch is, they don't, they don't really know it, and most of the, the adults don't know it. Mm. That if you're if you're an excellent athlete in the city, in a minute you're gonna be with whisked off to somewhere to, mm -hmm. to Buford or um, to Woodward, Carrollton, well, right. Yeah. So the best of the best is not in the city, and then that means what happens? The best of the best coaches are leaving as well. Icky Johnson. For the championship that ain't coming close This might require taking notes Homie, listen close Serendipity when you know You the one who chose We going past the end zone Crushing every goal I feel it in my enzymes In my chromosomes If you ain't come outside to go hard Then go back home I'm in my zone If it ain't great I'm better left alone This for the world Put what we speaking on On speakerphone Yeah Wills Let them know what we be on Serendipity, man Tune in going on guys welcome to another episode of serendipity i'm inky johnson here with my brother i'm oak how's everybody doing out there how you doing brother man i'm all good i can't call it how you feeling oh man i, I feel pretty good i yeah. feel pretty good uh my mind my spirit is is racing though yeah yeah we'll get into it a little bit i got you i got you man we're gonna kick it off with a quote card as we usually do and it reads, calm and quietude is not real calm. When you can be calm in the midst of activity, this is the true state of nature. Happiness and comfort is not real happiness. When you can be happy in the midst of hardship, then you see the true potential of the mind. Yes, uh, definitely want your insight on that, good doctor. Um, there's this term called uh, Adeoju, and it means those who created laughter in the eye of the storm. Yes, sir. So that's what this first reminds me of, that when, as you would say, when it's all good, it's all good, right? No doubt. No doubt. But when it's not, can we still be all good? Absolutely. Um, so it's like, can I, can I walk in the rain instead of run through the wind, rain? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? It's pouring down, can I walk? Right. Instead of uh, trying to get out of the rain, let me take it all in. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, so sir. it's um, what I what I come to is you are the creator of your moments. Mm -hmm. Your moments are not your creator. Mm. Your moments are your revealer. Mm. When you have those moments, it reveals who and where you are in life. Absolutely. Right. So if you are, as it says right here, um, That uh, this is the, the the true, let me see, the true state of natural happiness and comfort is not in real happiness. When you can be happy in the midst of hardship, sure. right? Yeah. When you're going through it and you still can find gratitude. Yes, sir. When life is is throwing you punches and you still can roll with them. Uh, I remember my pop, pops used to say all the time, um, you have to roll with the punches. Yes, sir. You know, I could come home and have a bad day, come home and have a good day, 
and he's still gonna say, say the same thing. You gotta roll with the punches, with right? The punches. Yes. So that and that was his way of saying you are the creator of your moments, mm -hmm. regardless of how great the moments are, regardless of how bad the moments are. If you're having a great day, you had a great day, celebrate it. You had a bad day, sit down and reflect on it. Sure. Get back up, do it again tomorrow. That's what that, that's what rolling with the punches look like, mm. right? You are the creator of your moments. Your moments are not the creator of you. Your moments are just the revealer of who you are. I'm picking that up, oh, I got you. It, um, it made me think about James chapter 1. When it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kind, because the testing of your faith goes on to produce perseverance, and perseverance must finish this race so that you may be complete and lacking nothing. It says, when you can be happy in the midst of hardship, then you see the true potential of the mind. Like I always say to people, um, <laughs> there's a quote that says, you don't reward a fish for swimming in water. They're supposed to do that. Right? It's like when things go well, things play in your favor, it's not that hard to be happy. When you get what you want, it's not that hard to smile. But you see the true character of a person when things don't go the way they want it to go, when things don't play in their favor, when they don't get what they want. That reveals, as my guy said, the true character of who they are. Right? Because oftentimes when people don't get what they want or when something doesn't play in their favor, if it changes their disposition, if it changes how they view a person, if it changes how they react to a certain situation, then you kind of know if you want to deal with this person or not. Then you kind of know if you want to journey with this person or not. Then you kind of know if you want to roll with this person or not. But if you can find a person that when things don't play in their favor, they don't get what they want, I like to call it trained optimism, right? Not fantasy land, but being able to look at situations, circumstances, moments, and figure out just what's the good in it, man. Mm -hmm. Figure out what's the positive in it, right? That's why my favorite quote in the world is that King's quote, because it's the rawest of the raw, it's the truest of the true. You judge the true character and caliber of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the true character and caliber of a person by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy, because it reveals the true character yeah. of who they are. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely picking that up, Oh. But man, um, I want to get your thoughts on something. Oak, I came across um, this term called commitment device, right? Which is a strategy or a tool that helps people stick to a plan or a decision, right? Commitment device, mm -hmm. a strategy or a tool that helps people stick to a plan or a decision. Commitment device. Um, I think one of the reasons that people, we um, don't stay committed to something mm -hmm. is because we don't start out with the belief in it. Yes, sir. We okay. start out with a false belief. We start out with a want to. We start out that it feels good. Yes, sir. But a belief, meaning um, that regardless of what happens, I'm going to uh, stay with it. Now, I'm going to have detours. I'm going to have setbacks. Yes, sir. So the second part of that is that you have to as I said earlier, you have to be gentle with yourself mm. and not beat yourself up when you don't meet your own standards in that moment. Because we got to remember, everything is a moment. Yes, sir. That doesn't mean you're not going to meet your own standards. That just means in this moment, I didn't. Mm. So in that moment where I don't meet my standard, do I give up on it? Do I quit? Right? Yes, so what, has, what we have to train ourselves to do is... In those moments where we fall short, sit in it for a second, recognize it, reflect on it, mm -hmm. and then keep it pushing. Gotcha. Right? That's that's um that's how we stay committed to a thing. Now, those are two ways that we stay committed to a thing. Yes, sir. The third one is why? Why are you doing it? Why? If your why is for exterior reasons, mm. then exterior circumstances are going to make you quit. Hmm. If your why are for internal reasons, then your external circumstances, whether good or bad, are not going to move you. Yes, they may sir. slow you down. They may speed you up. They may stop you for a moment. Hmm. But it's not going to take you off of what you started out being committed to. Yes, sir. That's why when we say it's become kind of chic now to say, what's your why? What's your why? 
Now, what's your why is a thing, it's supposed to drive you to do a thing even when you don't want to do it, even when it doesn't feel good, even when it doesn't seem like it's going to work out. You have to drive back to home. What is your why? Yes, sir. That's the intrinsic motivation, mm. right? What's their why is the extra, extrinsic motivation, and we're always going to be moved by that. Yes, sir. Right? And if you give me a moment to say this, which means I think now we're in a time where we have to change our algorithm, Inky. Talk about it. We have the algorithm of when we look at TikTok. We have an algorithm when we look at um, Facebook or, or IG. We have algorithms that we feed into our minds that is now affecting how committed we are to something, mm -hmm. how much and how much uh, time we commit to something, how great we're going to be at something. Yes, because sir. our algorithm is pressing us towards mm. exterior motivation, exterior things, being in education and seeing young people, older people every day. If they get an opportunity, mm -hmm. their heads are down on their phone. Yeah. And the algorithm that they're, that they're using or seeing or being presented to them is not producing a result mm. that's going to leave us productive. Mm. Yeah. So we that. have to change our algorithm, meaning what is it that we're taking in? What are the conversations we're having? Who are the people we're hanging out with? Picking Who are the people up. that we're watching? We must change our algorithm. Picking that up. If we are to get to where we ultimately say we want to. Yeah, I'm picking it up. Oh. I love it, man. Um... Commitment device, strategy, or tool that helps people stick to their decision, right? Commitment. Can I stay true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in has left? Can I stay true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in has left? That's interconnected to uh, algorithm, right? What you just spoke to. So I, I wrote something in my journal, Oak. I said, what we read, what we watch, what we listen to, are often precursors to the thoughts that we have, right? What we read, what we watch, and what we listen to are often precursors to the thoughts that we have, mm -hmm. right? I.e., algorithm, uh, yes. right? And what it produces. And so when I think about commitment device, right, I think in terms of, like, it's almost like edit, it's almost like replace and add to in certain areas and aspects of our lives when we're trying to accomplish certain things or become a certain type of person, right? And so with my daughter, right? You know, Jada just started track this year. And I told her, it's not so much about like what she's running, right? It's not so much about the four by one, not so much about the 200, not so much about the 100. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about those things. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to learn how to become a runner. And so what's the thing that's gonna have us committed to the person that we're trying to become? Oftentimes we look at the things that we're trying to accomplish. No, who is the person that I'm trying to become? I would often ask people, what's more important? What you acquire, what you accomplish, or who you become, right? Who we become will last a lot longer than the things that we seek to accomplish or even accomplish. And so when we talk about commitment device, when you have a goal, when you have aspirations, when you have things that you wanna do, what are the things that we can put in place that can keep us committed? What's the algorithm? What are the things that we're intaking? What are the things that we're reading? What are the things that we're listening to? What are the things that we're watching that are precursors to the thoughts that we're having on a journey to trying to accomplish the certain things that we're trying to accomplish? It's not so much about the goal or the aspiration as it is about the people that we're seeking to become in the midst of the algorithm or the commitment device. Yes, sir. Yeah. I love it, though, man. I love it. We, we, I mean, I'm, I'm tired. I'm yeah. tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, if I knew what I'm say. Because yeah. just just being inundated with it, uh -huh. day in and day out, and, and regardless of where you, you go, you can look at the news, you can look on social media, you, you can look at your workspace, you can look at your personal space. And if you really study it and study people and study yourself, mm -hmm. you will see that you are becoming... Um, a figment of, of your ma imagination because your imagination is rooted in the algorithms that we take in. Mm. Mm. That made me think about something, Oak. Um, I got a question. Uh, do you think 
We can share insight with people that can improve consumption habits or attention habits in terms of as it pertains to the algorithm or the things that we watch, the things that we see. Like, do you think there's some strategies or things that we can share that can improve consumption habits? I know on a broad spectrum, that's something different, but just in terms of strategy to improve that when it comes to algorithm or the things that we intake. Okay. One that comes to mind is um, there's some people that uses their phone, like their phone to wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. How do they use their phone to wake up in the morning? They set an alarm, right? Gotcha. So if you can be consistent and disciplined with it, when I start to to stroll down on whatever I'm strolling down, Mm -hmm. I put it on an 18-minute timer. Love it. When the timer goes off, I go off. Yes, sir. Because to say not to do it is ludicrous at this point, right? Right, yeah. Yet, there are ways that we can we can it, make it intervals. Mm. And then after that was 18 minutes, what are we going to replace it with? Yes, sir. Am I going to replace it with, um, am I going to replace it with meditation? Am I going to replace it with, let me call one of my partners just to catch up or somebody I know who's going to feed me some positive energy. Mm. Someone that is going to, um, we can talk about concepts. We can talk about uh, a money-making adventure, whatever it is, other things that you're interested in. Uh, Simone can call and talk about swimming with the sharks or whatever. Right That's her business. Tonight, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but, um, but what I'm saying is uh, scroll, set your timer, make that thing go off. Do-do-do-do. Now, it's up to you whether you press snooze or not. Just like in the morning, you can get up from it, from that clock, or you can press snooze. Yes, sir. Every time. So at the end of the day, you can give yourself uh, ways and strategies to limit the the uh, intake, Love if you will. It. Right? There are some people who can watch a certain channel all day, and we know certain channels just have different shows about uh, the same thing. Mm-hmm. NFL Network. Yeah. If you want in, into the NFL, boom, we know what that's going to be. Mm. You know, uh, MTV or whatever it may be. So that's why even when we were younger, they was like, you know, don't watch so much TV because yeah. that was that was those were ag- algorithms also. I know. It was training your mind as well. Absolutely. Right. So this is not new. Like social media is not new in the sense of what it's doing. Mm-hmm. It's just doing it faster. Mm-hmm. And it's doing it at an alarming rate, a more alarming rate. It's more as exponential now. So up. we're seeing the results of what is being taken into our minds. Mm. Uh, we're seeing those results much quicker, much yeah. faster. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's still it's still an algorithm, and we, we've been doing this forever. Absolutely. You know, man, improving consumption habits and belief habits, like... Actions, oh, actions are so frictionless, like to where, like you could do something so easy without even thinking about it and find yourself being pulled in so many different ways at the whim of the, anything. Some on your phone, some on the TV. Like actions are frictionless, right? To where I wrote this down allocate your attention, bro. Every single day, find ways to allocate your attention to the person that you're trying to become or the things that you're trying to do. And so on a personal level, like, oh, something that I would always do, and, like, I started doing this, like, years ago, man. Like, at night, I always looked at, at night after I pray, kids go to bed, whatever. Like, if my wife is in there on the phone with one of her girls talking, like, I look at nighttime as, all right, I'm a journal, I'm a write, and then it's, like, my dream time. Like, this is my time to just... Dream. So I get on my computer. I start looking at places just to take my mind somewhere, right? And I started doing it a long time ago. So it got to a point to where, you know, wife would come in the room. I could still be looking at something. It could be a home. It could be a destination. I could be watching something. We could be talking. And she's like, all right, put that computer up. I'm like, I got you, babe. I'm stuck. Let me look at this real quick. And I'm going to put it up. All right, cool. Put the, put the computer up. All right, cool. So then... I started coming in the room, and I'm like, where my computer at? <laughs> she, she, she not here in my computer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was thankful for it because 
Then when we come in the room, we're not doing anything else but focusing on each other, yeah. right? It allowed me to allocate my attention on what was the most important thing in that moment, which was my wife. And so even finding ways, I heard a cat talk about, like you talked about the intervals. I heard a cat talk about like James Clear that wrote the book Atomic Habit talked about the two minute rule, right? Like every single day, if it's something that you wanna do or wanna accomplish or something you wanna sacrifice or not do as much, like break it up into two minutes, right? Find time to just do it for two minutes and try to let it go or find time to do it for two minutes and try to become better at it. Mm -hmm. And so that interval play, I'm definitely picking that up and I'm with you on it. But in terms of improving our consumption habits and belief habits, I think the first thing we have to do, man, is find ways to allocate our attention to what's important. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm picking that up, man. Oh, how important is it as a leader to be emotionally intelligent in terms of the environment and the people that we're connected to, emotional intelligence? Um, it's the second most important aspect of being a leader. Yeah. The first is your social intelligence, mm. being able to pick up on... Um, That's good. How Everyone. people interact from day to day, moment to moment, paying attention to how a That's group good. of people move, right? That's, That's why it's called social emotional learning. Yeah, the good. emotional learning part is more so of understanding. You can kind of understand how other people are, mm -hmm. but the emotional part is being invested in yourself. Yeah. Being able to say where you are right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's important in relationships, whether you're, you're a leader in, of a corporation, you're a leader of a small group, you're a leader in your house home, you're the leader in, in a moment, momentary leadership. Yes, sir. It's in your emotions and you being able to identify what they are. Yeah. Me being able to say, um, we come together and I'm like, hey, I'm, on, I'm at a six. Right. Then yeah. you say, I got you. Yeah. I got you. I'm going to carry you the rest of the way. You come and say, hey, Oak, I'm at, I'm at eight. I, and I got you, right? Yeah. You come and say, we come together, and you say you're at four. Right. I say, I'm at negative three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might need to put on some gospel <laughs> music, some rap music. We got to sit down somewhere yeah, for a you second. You're see the preacher man. You understand? <laughs> right. But it's, it's understanding where you are, being able to yeah. be where your feet are, right? No doubt. Emotionally, where are, you, where are your feet emotionally? That doesn't always mean where are your feet, be where your feet are physically. Yeah, that's good, Daryl. That's good. That's good. I said emotional intelligence to understand, use, and manage your ability over your own emotions in a positive way to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, diffuse conflict. It says a leader's emotional intelligence creates a certain culture and work environment. High levels of emotional intelligence create climates of information sharing, trust, healthy risk taking, and learning flourishes. Environments without emotional intelligence creates fear and anxiety and can't be productive. It said fear and anxiety can be productive in the short term, but it never lasts because it always burns out. And I love it, man, when it talks to emotional intelligence, because like you spoke to, I think about it just in terms of outside of the workspace, which that is extremely important, but also just thinking about it as a husband and as a father and just being an effective leader, right? The press to be an effective leader, right? You have to become emotionally intelligent to your surroundings, to the people that you work with, to the people that you do things with, and also just knowing people, man, knowing what makes people tick, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Knowing the people that you can say certain things to, they all good. Knowing the people that you can give the look to, they all good. Knowing the people that you can challenge, and they all good. And that's becoming emotional intelligent to the environment, to the people that you're connected to, because you want the environment to flourish, right? Because if you become effective and efficient with your emotional intelligence, it's going to improve the environment that you're in every single day and what you guys are trying to accomplish. I look, at, I look at it like, uh, like the love languages. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you could be feeding the wrong love language, right? You could be doing things in terms of, like, man, I'm doing this for, I wanna do this for my wife, but you could be feeding the wrong love. Like that cannot be her love language, right? 
and you're not having emotional intelligence in terms of what feeds her, what makes her go, what makes her feel a certain type of way. And so I think emotional intelligence is something that's often slept on, but something that's extremely important when it comes to just being effective and efficient with whatever the task is yep. in a team setting. The, 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 the part that, one of the most important parts of being emotionally intelligent is being open. Mm, I right? love it. Because a, a, leader, a leader that's not open is going to cascade down the slippery slope of being manipulative. Yeah. It's going to be manipulation. Talk about that. Right? Though. Meaning, I can pay attention to you, and I can know everything that's going on with you. I can figure you, you know, see how you move, see what makes you tick, mm -hmm. this, that, and the third. So now I have the ability to use my emotional intelligence to manipulate situations. Mm -hmm. Yet, if I'm open and you're open, mm -hmm. then we create a space where inspiration can be born. Yeah, I love that. So now it's not a situation where... Because generally what happens when you have leaders and followers, and leaders and followers are the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, no one is an all-the-time leader. No one is an all-the-time follower. Okay. So Pick that that, up. that's cyclical. Pick that up. All right? Don't miss that jewel. Pick that up. If, if, you're not teaching, if you're not teaching people to be followers, then you're not teaching them to be leaders. Pick that up, man. Because I can't lead in places that I won't follow. Yes, indeed. Right? That's a fact. And I can't follow in places I won't lead. Absolutely. Yet, when we talk about manipulation, that's, it's so one-sided. Mm -hmm. Meaning, one side is going to end up kind of, quote-unquote, winning. Right? Mm -hmm. But when we talk about inspiration, inspiration is when what I get from you, you get something back from me. Mm -hmm. So, we're talking about the love languages. If I know your love language, but you don't know mine, then I can man always manipulate you. You can never manipulate me. Right. So, what we... Be create is we create a relationship that's built off of one being dominant, one being submissive. Mm. We see that problem a lot today. Right. But it, the root of it is we're fighting for manipulation. We're fighting for positional power mm. rather than fighting to create a, an environment of inspiration. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where I'm open, you're open. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's where the trust is built. Mm. You don't get trust on the front end. Mm. Yeah. You build a trust because I was open with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm picking that up 100%. My boy Mayo says, somebody asked him a question about what type of people do he want in his organization? What type of people are you trying to attract? He said, we want to attract people that are magnets, people that want to be here, people that are going to come play with each other, play for each other. Like we want magnets, guys that want to be with guys in certain environments, right? And so when you talk about love languages, when we talk about the source of manipulation, you want things that are opposite of that. When it comes to character, when it comes to understanding, when it comes to compassion, when it comes to emotional intelligence, that's something that you don't hear about when you're young. That's something that you don't hear about when it comes to leadership, but it's something that's extremely important in all facets of life, right? People speak about leadership, people speak about all these things, but nobody comes to you and speak to you about behavior science. Nobody comes to you and speak to you about emotional intelligence. And I think that's one of the things that's the secret sauce in terms of development and making environments flourish. Yes, right. Yes. Not just you flourishing, but being in an environment that's filled with inspiration, being in an environment that's filled with power, with happiness, with joy, and everybody said, hey, man, let's go that way. Mm -hmm. And everybody in sync, like, let's roll, let's do it. Right. Like, that's emotional intelligence at its finest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, emotional intelligence is, uh, can be a kryptonite to the algorithm now. Yeah, talk about right? it. Right? Because, meaning, um, when we're emotionally intelligent, then we are in tune with what we're taking in, what we're giving out. Mm -hmm. When you're emotionally uh, unintelligent, mm -hmm. then what happens is you take whatever you get. Mm. Mm. Right? Whatever, you, you just consume it. You're like, nah, I don't want that. You just get fed everything. Mm. But when you become emotionally intelligent, now you're starting to think, only, not only with your mind, you're starting to think with your heart. And yeah. You're starting to think with your soul. Absolutely. That's the way in which you begin to fight off 
this algorithm that we're in, mm. the way in which we begin to change the algorithm, is our focus on emotional learning, yeah. emotional leadership, emotional health. Yes, sir. Which leads me to um, something I want to talk about. When I talk about emotional intelligence, when we talk about allocating your attention, when we talk about uh, the algorithm, when we talk about commitment device, like all of these things, I look at it in terms of it ties into something, right? And that's something being true behavior change or identity change, right? Like true behavior change or identity change. And I read something that said behavior and beliefs. If you're lucky, try to put the behavior before the beliefs and the beliefs will always follow. But true behavior change and identity change. If you're lucky, try to put the behavior before the belief because the belief will always follow. What's your thoughts on it, man? True um, behavior change. It's, it's kind of simple for me in this sense. Like I always tell you know, people will come and say, well, I want to be this, I want to do this, I want this position, especially in education, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one of, the, one of the beautiful things about education is, is not, you're not stymied uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. What I mean by that is, if you want to be, uh, if you want to be a counselor, you can go sit with the counselor at, at, while you're a teacher on your break. You can start counseling your students, meaning, do the job that you want before you get it. So mm, the behavior comes first. Yeah, that's good. And then everything else, uh, the residue that, ca that cascades from that, you will get. That's good. That becomes your identity, that, or I would say your title. That's good. Right? The behavior comes first. Do the job that you want before you get it. Yes, sir. I love it. I'm picking that up, man. It said a term, we hear the term often, fake it until you make it. Right, that was a very popular term, and still, in some cases, is a very popular term in today's world. Fake it until you make it. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you ain't got it? Fake it until you make it. Not faith it until you make it, but fake it until you make it. Yeah. And it Say says... That Say that again, Jack, yeah. you said it fast. Yeah, you not it faith fast. it until you make it, but fake it until you make it. Right? That's a term that we often hear. And I wrote something in my journal. It said... Um, Fake it until you make it. You're asking yourself to believe something positive about yourself without having any evidence for it, right? Words for beliefs with no evidence is called delusion, right? And so when it talks about behavior and belief and letting your behavior go before your beliefs, your behavior represents who you are. Your beliefs will always follow, right? And so when you say fake it until you make it, you're trying to convince yourself to be something that you don't exemplify in terms of your behavior. And so what I mean by that is, oftentimes when we start to pursue something, when we start to do something, when we want something, when we aspire to go get something, right? And you often see people that don't exemplify the things that they say they want. And when I say don't exemplify, I'm talking about when they say it and you look at their behavior, you look at their actions, you look at their thought pattern. You even can exemplify their language. You're like, oh man, like, you ain't never gonna walk that goal down, right? Like, you ain't never gonna walk it down. Not that it's not possible. You never gonna walk it down because you don't exemplify the behavior. You don't exemplify the thought pattern. You don't even speak in terms as if you're gonna go get it, right? I remember saying to a group of people, I said, my whole life, man, ever since I was a kid, no matter what situation I found myself in, oh, I could always see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can always take a situation and spend it. I could always speak about it a certain way that put me in the process of chasing it, right? Not that I had it, it put me in the process of chasing it, right? It put my belief system in the process of chasing it. But the first time that I felt as if my connection was lost was after the injury when I was trying to find purpose. My language had changed. If I go back to that chapter in my life, my language had changed. I wasn't even speaking truth to power. I wasn't speaking positivity. I wasn't speaking optimism over my situation. My perspective had changed. I wasn't seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. I wasn't being positive. I wasn't trying to spin the situation. Like everything that gave me power before I accomplished something, I had excluded all of that, right? 
And so I wasn't able to get it. I wasn't able to accomplish. I had lost my connection, right? In other words, I wrote it down. It says something positive about yourself without having evidence for it. Words for beliefs with no evidence is called delusion. I was in a delusional state. I was never going to accomplish what I was saying I was seeking because my beliefs and my attitude and behavior didn't line up. I tell my kids all the time, man, your behavior is one of the most important things you possess. It's one of the most, that's why when people say, hey man, stay positive, and a person in here will be like, hey, positive, man, I ain't, I ain't got nothing positive to be about. But when you can stay positive, it goes back to the first thing that we spoke about, commitment device, strategy or tool that helps people stick to a plan or decision. Stay positive. That's the first law. Oh, that's the first law. If I can stay positive regardless of what happens, that don't mean I'm in a delusional state. That means I have power to control the narrative and my perspective and how I see things, right? I have power to put my behavior in such a place to go before my belief, right? And so find ways to stay power, stay true to what you're doing. Find power. I'm say stay powerful. Not stay powerful. You ain't no Avenger. Right? Not, not stay powerful. Stay true. To what you're trying to accomplish, stay ten toes down, man. So, so you you said we say stay positive, right? And I heard it. Somebody out there is hearing it. Then the question becomes how, how, how to regain that stay positive attitude? How to regain it when we're when we've lost it? Mm -hmm. And I will offer two things. Two very doable, actionable things. One is just speak gratitude. Mm -hmm. Speak it. Just speak. I have I have gratitude. Yes, sir. I have gratitude. You may not even know what you're being, what you have gratitude for in this moment, but just speak it. Mm. The power on Butu, right? Just just speak it. The words. The second, you get reconnected by reconnecting with your folks. Because somewhere along the lines, when we get disconnected from our purpose, from our power, from, from the things that we said we wanted to do, yes, sir. when we get disconnected, I bet you a dollar the donuts that you've gotten disconnected from the folks who helped you get, stay connected before the adversity hits. Yes, sir. Talk about that it. means in any moment, pick it. the phone up. Don't miss the moment of picking the phone up, yes, whether that's calling your mom, whether that's calling your dad, whether that's calling your best friend, or calling your cousin, calling whomever feeds into your spirit. Mm. So first, th then the prerequisite for that is identify those people who feed your spirit. Mm. Identify that. those people. Because what happened, life would, would take you in so many different ways. Mm that you'll find yourself weeks upon weeks of going in the rigmarole of life and you haven't connected with your people. Yes, sir. So the two things I'm, I'm saying, Picking that up. two possible ways that you can reconnect once you find yourself disconnected, I am grateful. Yes. Dot, dot, dot. In English, English makes it called lips, I think, whatever. But I am grateful. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I am grateful. Dot, dot, dot. Reconnect with the people that you were connected with when you were connected to yourself, to the universe, and to the heavens. Yes, Reconnect with your people. Yeah, absolutely. Those are actionable item things that you can do. Yes, sir. You hold the power to do that. Absolutely. And I'm going to pick up on the back side of that, man. Like, when you say how... Like, I'm a big habit person, right? I believe, man, like, when you work and you got good habits, habits drive behavior, mm -hmm. right? And so you always ask people, do your habits reflect the things that you seek to accomplish, want, or desire? Like, do you have habits in your life that reflect that? And I wrote something, like, I always journal, or can I wrote something that said the habit must be established before it can be improved, Right? Something has to become a standard in your life before you can worry about optimizing it. Why are habits important? Habits help you shift the internal narrative about yourself. 
right? Habits help you shift the internal narrative about yourself. The habit must be established before it can be improved. Something has to become a standard in your life before you can optimize it. Do your habits reflect the things that you seek to accomplish, the things that you desire, and the things that you want? Create some habits. Habits drive behavior, right? And following up behind your behavior will always be your belief system. Get a good group of habits, man, that can drive your behavior and let your beliefs drive that. Yeah. But, oh, man, I want to finish with a word and close my journal up, man. Cat tried to get me for my journal the other day, on, man. We don't sold it on eBay. Tried to sell it. I don't know how much you'll get for it, but, you know. <laughs> it'll hurt me. It'll hurt me more sentimentally than anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I got a word. I got a word for us. Oh, what do you think about when you hear the word freedom? Freedom. 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 Ultimate responsibility. Mm-hmm. Because there is nothing that's hindering you from doing whatever it is you want to do, yes. from accomplishing whatever it is you want to accomplish. So you have the responsibility not to fall victim to the outside noise. Yes, you have the responsibility to make your words become your actions mm-hmm. and then make your actions become your love. Yes, sir. Right? Talk so freedom... It's not necessarily, I put it like this. Freedom is not having to follow directives. Mm -hmm. Freedom is always having to follow directions. Talk about it. Directives are from man-made. Directives are what someone, when you have to do something, when somebody tells you to do something, right? Mm -hmm. At a certain time, whenever you set, you're on a schedule, right? Those are directives. But... Freedom is directions. Yes, sir. You get this, let's say this table right here came and it wasn't put together. Mm-hmm. We had to put it together, right? In that box, unless Allison or somebody just stole it, tried to make us look like a fool. <laughs> and but in that box is gonna be what? Directions, directions yeah. of how to put it together. Absolutely. The directions come from the creator. Right. The directive, you, you don't have to put it together now. You don't have to put it together tomorrow. Yes, sir. You have to figure out and get in tune with when do I apply these directions that have been given to me. Mm. I have the freedom to figure out when to apply God's directions. Yes, indeed. Picking that up. Mm. You know, whenever, whenever I hear the word freedom or think about freedom, I always think it's interconnected to sacrifice because whatever level of freedom that you have present day, whether it be young people, people in general, Oftentimes, it's somebody prior to you that sacrificed so you can enjoy that level of freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And you always have to honor that. You know what I'm saying? Oftentimes, that get lost in frustration, that get lost in adversity, opposition, whatever the case may be. I always tell my wife, when we encounter a situation and we go into it and it's not playing in our favor and how we thought it would go, I always tell her, we're going to learn from this, we're going to grow from this, so when our children come up, We can pass them this information to give them a certain level of freedom, right? Freedom is not always about financial freedom. Sometimes freedom refers to information, right? Freedom refers to certain things that you can learn. So when you encounter the same situation, you're in a better place. Freedom, right? Thought process wise, you're in a better space. Freedom, Right, because of some information that somebody could have passed down to you. It's like when we talk about generational wealth, people oftentimes think generational wealth just in terms of money. But sometimes generational wealth is what? It's in your folks. Yep. It's in your people that came before you, right? The information that they can provide you, the principles, right? How they raised you, how they told you to treat people. That's a form of generational wealth, i.e., freedom, right? But before you encounter freedom, never forget, man, there's always a level of sacrifice that probably came before that so you can enjoy whatever level of freedom that you're encountering and having to enjoy. It's our time, man. We appreciate the support. Appreciate the ears. We out. Peace. Change the algorithm. Change the algorithm. Change the algorithm. Yes, sir. Serendipity, man. Tune in.